again, everybody. I'm Mark Malone, your host for the Foodland Pepsi High School Sports Week show. From the volleyball courts to the football stadiums, our Sports Week cameras were out in full force during the past week to bring you the best in high school sports action. We'll get to that in just a few seconds. But first, a very important programming note. Next Sunday, September 29th, High School Sports Week will be seen one hour earlier at 10.30 so that WPXI can bring you Ryder Cup golf. The following week, we'll be back with our normal schedule, but make sure you don't miss us next week at September 29th at 10.30. Well, with the weather change we had last week, it certainly felt like football on Friday night. The excitement of conference play for, the, for most teams was in the air and all the action kept our high school sports week cameras very busy. So let's get right to the action of several key games that we think you'll enjoy, starting with a trip up the Ohio River. Although the Rochester Rams, wearing dark blue with Battle of the Union Scotties on the ground, their emotions were sky high for this home game. After a fumble, the Rams' Essex Law followed with a quick score. A penalty flag erased that TD, but it didn't matter. Just two plays later, Law goes 13 yards for another six, and this time it counts. But that was only the beginning. Law went on to collect 201 yards on just eight carries and five touchdowns, including this 81-yard ramble. The guys definitely got big college potential. And all that came before the halftime gun sounded. The Union Scotties did manage to score twice in the fourth quarter. One of those scores came on this nice dash by Wanza Robinson. But Rochester's potent offense had long since put the game out of reach, and they crushed Union 63-19. to In AAA face-off, the South Moreland Scotties and their home team Red stood to face the Golden Lions of Greensburg-Salem. It was a defensive struggle with Sean Zelmore intercepting the first quarter to stop a Greensburg drive. Now the coaches were just a tad anxious on the sideline when a 33-yard field goal attempt by Tom Butts was just wide of the goalpost, no good. The Golden Lions tried to mount an attack with Scotty Murray, but he's leveled by the defense of Sean Zelmore here. What a hit. Greensburg-Salem had a chance late in the game on a blocked punt by Sean Mars, but couldn't get it into the end zone, and it remained a deadlock, 0-0. Now in the last minute of play, South Moreland's Rich Hutchinson fires to Zelmore on the sideline route to keep the Scotties' hopes alive. Great catch. Then with just six seconds left, Zelmore makes the big catch again. This time it counts, and that put a lid on a very exciting 7-0 win for South Moreland over Greensburg-Salem. In City League action, the Peabody Highlanders entered Bear Country as they faced off with Oliver. In the third quarter, Oliver holding a slim 7 excuse me, 8-7 to seven lead when Peabody's Aaron Sean does his Swan does his best Randall Cunningham impression here and unleashes a 34-yard strike to the speedy Casey Givner and that put Peabody on top. Now they missed a two-point conversion and the Bears seem poised for a comeback when senior Antoine Harris connects with Marcus Johnson on this 57-yard beauty. But the worst that could happen did. And the play was erased due to an illegal motion penalty and that seemed to take most of the steam out of Oliver. Now Peabody took advantage with Swan scrambling again. This time, to the left, he finds Gibner in the back of the end zone again for his third score of the night. Now a two-point conversion made it 21 to eight for the Highlanders after three quarters. After scoring again in the final period, Oliver was driving in the last two minutes, but Gibner comes up with a big play on defense this time, and they shut down Oliver. Peabody prevails 21 to 14. Well, Wolverines are known for their ferocity and Tigers for their strength. If you make each of those beasts the mascot for a football team, put both of those teams in Quad A East and make both of those teams undefeated, and on top of that, put both of those teams on the same football field, well, then you have Woodland Hills and McKeesport, our Foodland Pepsi High School Sports Week's big game. Both the McKeesport Tigers in red jerseys and the Woodland Hills Wolverines were 3-0 coming into this important game. A contest that many thought could resemble a duel between possible Quad A champions and provide a beast in the East. The early going was a struggle for both sides until late in the first quarter. Head coach George Smith watched as McKeesport marched to the Woodland Hills 32. On second and two, the handoff went to tailback Mike Logan, who zipped down the sideline and in for the Tigers' first score. 
In the second quarter, the Wolverines pulled off a fake punt on fourth and nine, but the pass was fumbled by Jason Taylor, only to be scooped up by the Tigers' Dennis Robinson. From their own 23, McKeesport engineered a super drive, guided by quarterback George Humphreys. Mike Logan struck again, skirting the defense on this six-yard scamper to open the lead up to two touchdowns. George Novak's Wolverines were stifled by a swarming McKeesport D on the very next series, and the Tigers took over on the 50. Penalties helped them move to the Woodland Hills 26 when Dennis Robinson, behind great blocking, twisted his way in for six and a 21 to zip halftime lead. A turnover in the third frame gave the Tigers the ball only 15 yards from Pater, and it took only four plays until Mike Logan ripped in from five yards out to turn up the heat. A 63-yard drive in the fourth quarter ended with quarterback Humphreys calling his own number, and the McKeesport tally rolled up to 35 to nothing. Late in the fourth quarter, Woodland Hills fans got a thrill, although junior Ray Allen had trouble with a handle on the pigskin, but managed to scoop it up for a five-yard touchdown run. It was not enough offense for the Wolverines and plenty for McKeesport as they racked up a lopsided 35-6 victory. The running backs may have garnered most of the glory, but they know the entire Tigers team deserves credit. Because our, our D is real good. Our offense is coming along real good, and our special teams are doing real good. Our, our young line, our young offensive line, they're coming along. They're blocking the good. We didn't, you know, we had a lot of inexperience. We got a lot of juniors. We got a couple of sophomores up there, so they're blocking good. That's our key. They give us the holes, the backs just right. McKeesport head coach George Novak just may have a new beast growing in the Quad East as the Tigers have a very potent offense and it appears as though they are on the prowl for more victories. In McKeesport, with the Foodland Pepsi High School Sports Week Big Game, I'm Keith James. Looks like they have some great players. The McKeesport Tigers will indeed have their hands full next weekend with the Penn Hills Indians. The Indians tomahawk the Plum Mustangs 24 to 15 on Friday. Besides that, the Tigers will have to try and pull off this next win on the road. Well, as the temperature dropped this past week, soccer heated up. Our first game has the girls from North Hills clashing with the Shaler Titans. The Titans, wearing the home team white, started quickly. Less than a minute into the game, the North Hills goalie Jen McMahon misplayed this throw in. Natalie Turgovic was there for the goal. When Natalie scores for Shaler, you have to look closely. You might mistake her for her twin sister, Nicole, who wears number 25 for Shaler. Well, early in the third period, North Hills drew even when midfielder Kelly Keenan powered this left-footed shot past goalie Sharon Tekrin. Minutes later, Shaler forward Julie Deer was tripped near the North Hills goal. She took advantage of the ensuing direct kick to boot the ball over the head of McMahon for a 2 1 lead. Now, Keenan brought the Indians back when she scored her second goal of the night, and that appeared to give North Hills momentum. But their hopes were dashed just 30 seconds later as Deer lifted this kick into the net and iced a 3 2 win for Shaler. Well, the Lady Spartans of Montour are only in their second year of their soccer program, but they're showing plenty of improvement. And that was evident this past Wednesday in their meeting against the Lady Rebels from Seton LaSalle. It, it took just a minute and a half into the game for the Montour's Amy Kovac to put a goal in the net. Her first score ever. With just under two minutes left in the first quarter, Laura Stewart made it two to nothing game by chipping the ball off the outstretched hands of Rebel goalkeeper. Julie Conrad adds Montour's fourth goal of the game with this some outstanding extra effort. And despite spirited play from Seton LaSalle's goalkeeper Kim Petcher, well, the Spartans would not be denied their first ever section win. In her first game ever as a forward wing, Amy Kovach notched a hat trick and locked up the victory for coach Scott Johnson and his Montour Spartans as they dumped Seton LaSalle 5-0. Thursday night turned out to be a good night for volleyball, especially for the fans of the Lady Highlanders of Baldwin. They visited Upper St. Clair, and Keith James was courtside to watch all the serves and volleys. The Panthers of Upper St. Clair in the dark jerseys had their hands full with a strong lineup of seniors leading the Baldwin charge. Set one was dominated by the Highlanders' strong net play and the likes of Colleen Bowen. And Heather Petrus taking charge. Bridget Burke anchored many setups, and the Highlanders rolled to a 15-1 score in both the first and second sets. 
Upper St. Clair fought back in the third set, nodding the score at six all on fine service from Bree Shuttleworth. And strong setup work from Eileen Shu. But that only seemed to stiffen the Highlanders' resolve as they went on to win the third set 15 to nine and Baldwin swept the match in three straight. Well, with that great mix of sports, it should tell you that the fall sports schedule is in full swing. It's time for us to check some results on the Foodland Pepsi High School Sports Week scoreboard. Can a field hockey coach log the double century mark in only 20 years on the sidelines? That answer and more just around the corner on the Foodland Pepsi High School Sports Week show. While football games can draw thousands of fans, field hockey contests rarely interest more than a dozen. In a sport that garners such little attention, you'd think that the coaches would maintain their interest long enough to compile any significant records. But as our Foodland Pepsi Sports Week correspondent Keith James tells us, that's certainly not the case for the coach at Vincentian High School. You may not know it, but the Vincentian Royals have been a very strong team over the past 11 years, winning WPIAL field hockey championships 10 times during that stretch. As the 1990 defending champs, the Royals traveled to Woodland Hills this past Tuesday to try and extend the excellence of their head coach, Judith Williamson. On the sidelines since 1972, Judith was in search of her 200th career victory. It really didn't sink in until I was, you know, tabulating all my results year after year after year. And last year, we started at 185. And we had a shot at winning the 200th game last year. And we struggled a little bit at the end of the season. And this year, you know, we had to fill in for our seniors that graduated. So we knew we'd win it this year, but it never really sunk into me where I really had any aspiration of getting 200 until the end of last season. Rival head coach Deborah Allhouse and the Lady Wolverines of Woodland Hills were very aware of the significance of the game, and they didn't make it easy. Lisa Daugherty broke the ice for the Royals midway in the first half with this tally, but the Wolverines were stubborn. My prevent defense, let's go! Coach Williamson kept after her team, and they opened up the game in the second half on this goal from forward Jennifer Anna. Then Megan Heckert scored. And another goal came from Gabriella Hendley. Before another goal from Lisa Daugherty, the coach had her concerns about getting the win. It was 1-0 in the first half, and we really had to make some adjustments defensively more than offensively because this is where we had to fill the void this year since our seniors graduated. So we compensated, you know, by trying to keep the ball in our offensive end, and we, you know, we accomplished that goal. Once we got that second goal, I think the momentum swung, and we scored, you could see, about three times in a row right after that. The final of 5-1 to one assured Judith of well-deserved congratulations. Thank you. We're at the game bar and a well-deserved non-alcoholic celebration, plus the comfort in knowing she had reached a plateau that few could dream of. 200 wins in field hockey is probably the best re record in Western Pennsylvania. At this point, I'm guessing, I, you know, I, I've, I'm not the tenure coach. Martha Hemlinger at Fox Chapel has a few more years than I do, but I feel that in the 20 years that I've coached, we've reached a plateau at 200. I don't think anybody comes close at this point. 
From Woodland Hills, Keith James reporting for the Foodland Pepsi High School Sports Week show. Coach Williamson will have to wait until later this week for a chance at win number 201. The Royals were nipped by North Allegheny on Thursday by a margin of one to nothing. Well, lots of reaction and input again this past week from many of you via our Foodland Pepsi High School hotline. If you haven't used it yet, you might want to jot it down in case your favorite team is having a big game or if you have a candidate to nominate for our Athlete of the Week award. Our hotline number is easy to remember. It's 859-3300. Or if you'd like, drop us a line. Our address is Foodland Pepsi High School Sports Week Show, 3 Norfolk Drive, and the Coriopolis, PA, and the zip is 15108. We look forward to hearing from you. Well, with week four of the high school football season completed, you may be wondering how your team's doing. So with the help of the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette, we'll take a look at our Foodland Pepsi High School Sports Week's top teams. In the top ten across the state, Harrisburg jumps on the list at number ten. And at number eight is Easton, PA, with North Allegheny holding down the fourth position. The top three spots remain the same, which means Connellsville is third, Mount Lebanon is number two in the state, and Central Bucks West is ranked first. In the City League, Perry leads the parade with Peabody hopping up to the second spot, and Oliver is now number three. In the Whippeal A rankings, well, they're headed by Farrell, and Rochester is close behind. The double A lineup with Beth Center moving into the number three slot behind Steel Valley and the top ranked Aliquip Equips. Brownsville jumps into the penthouse of the AAA teams as Montour tumbles to fourth, and Thomas Jefferson roared into the rankings at number five. McKeesport and Penn Hills both got a boost in the Quad A listings, but the top three are unchanged, with North Allegheny trailing Connellsville and Mount Lebanon. A special congratulations to the Mount Lebanon Blue Devils. They were ranked as the 16th best team in the entire country in last week's USA Today poll. How can this soccer player stand out on a team that is full of top-ranked players? The number of goals tells the story coming up on the Foodland Pepsi High School Sports Week show. Got the right one, baby. Most try to win, and many try to provide outstanding performances, and even a few try to help their teammates excel with their own leadership. Keith James brings us the story of a soccer player from Quaker Valley who fulfilled all those ambitions this past Thursday and then some as he went on to become our Foodland Pepsi High School Athlete of the Week. Soccer has been a leader at Quaker Valley High School for many years now, with a strong program developed under head coach Gene Klein. This year's squad is no exception. Ranked tops in the entire state, they are packed with talent and potential and expectations. One senior player helping to fulfill those expectations is Ben McKnight. As a three-year starter, Ben is helping QV to pile up the wins and helping the younger members of the squad with his experience. Ben's ability with the soccer ball is evident as he pumped in four goals this past Thursday with Quaker Valley's win over Quigley. And that doesn't even count the penalty kick of his that was disallowed. On any given day, anyone on this powerhouse team can provide a huge performance, like an earlier season five goal effort from teammate Phil Oxendine. But only a few players have the experience to know how to help guide the team like Ben does. I started as a sophomore, and uh, that year was more of just, I was playing, I was a role player. And uh, last year, I had to pick it up and start playing more leadership. But now, this year, as co-captain uh, and as a senior, you have to really start to, uh, you know, show leadership on the field. And you have to really start picking up the players when there's something wrong is going on. You know, when we had a sl small letdown today, you know, I had to try to pick everyone up and get us going. Keeping his team going at the top of the soccer standings and helping to fulfill those expectations. A tip of the hat to our Foodland Pepsi High School Sports Week Athlete of the Week, Quaker Valley's Ben McKnight. A hearty congratulations go to Ben McKnight as he joins a rapidly expanding list of Athlete of the Week award winners. The list includes last week's honoree Justin Rada from the Mars Cross Country team. Justin received his plaque from Sports Week's Keith James and Robert Blazewick, who operates the Foodland Supermarket in Wexford. Coaches Tim Tyler and John Henchek appreciated Justin's efforts as he helped the Mars team extend their impressive unbeaten streak, which now stands at 38 in a row. 
Well, make sure you follow Ben and Justin's examples and always give it your best. You never know when our Foodland Pepsi Sports Week cameras might be at your school looking for another Athlete of the Week. Stay tuned. There's more to cheer about coming up on the Foodland Pepsi High School Sports Week show. How high schools all over Pittsburgh are getting points for collecting Foodland register receipts and proof of purchases from Pepsi 12 packs. On December 1st, the four schools with the most points will split 10,000 bucks, one each from Quad A, Triple A, Double A, and Single A. So help your high school. Ask your coaches about Foodland Pepsi Battle for the Bucks or call 1 800 433 COLA. And athletes to focus on in the next seven days. And the Foodland Pepsi High School Sports Week show will be on the sidelines. Here's Keith James with a rundown on events to watch for. Next Sunday, we'll bring you the story of a soccer player from the Montour Spartans girls team who has a most unusual style for throw-ins. High School Sports Week will show you how she does it and why. Plus, we'll give you a look behind the microphones of some of the many radio stations in the area that do a great job of putting you on the 50-yard line for high school sports without even leaving your living room. The sports schedule remains jammed. On Tuesday, the Riverview Boys Golf Team plays host to Greensburg Central Catholic. In volleyball that same day, the McGuffey Highlanders will be tested by the girls from Trinity. Next Friday, in Quad A football, McKeesport will square off with the Indians of Penn Hills. Traditional rivals Hopewell and Blackhawk meet at the AAA level. In AA confrontations, Beth Center travels to Charleroi. And at the A level, it's Northgate playing host to Clareton. While in the City League, Oliver meets up with Perry. All right, don't forget, next Sunday, September 29th, the Foodland Pepsi High School Sports Week show will be seen one hour earlier. So make sure you catch us at 1030 on Sunday morning on WPXI Channel 11. Well, that's all we have time for now. I hope you enjoyed the show. I'm Mark Malone, and we'll see you next week.